one thing a lot of people miss in Krita is being able to see the waveform of the audio that you're playing. Now, I can live with it or without it, but some people might need to have it to be able to have a visual synchronization for specific events. It's one of those things. It'd be lovely if they do add it in the next version. Uh, I don't think it's in the new update. If I'm wrong, you can correct me in the comments, but I look for it and I still can't find it. So somebody on Reddit suggested a workaround. It's a little tricky, but this will involve showing you some other cool features of the program. I'm also going to put my project file in the notes below. So if you don't want to slug through this whole process yourself, you're going to have access to that and you can hopefully drop your waveform in. So let's see how we can grab the waveform, plop it on the a visual representation on the image so we can have our own very simple, very basic, but fairly functional waveform. I don't have a sponsor, so if you want to support my work and help it to continue, you can subscribe to my Patreon. I'm making new animation projects week by week and providing animation assets that can be downloaded and used. I also have a very large collection of tutorials in the LinkedIn Learning Library covering animation and design, and I'm putting all the links to these in the notes below. So before we start, uh, let me give you a quick overview of the process that we're using. Uh, it's a motion tween system, which will actually be very useful in other scenarios like doing motion graphics and stuff like that. So uh, I've just got a dummy uh, scene open here. I'm going to get a simple brush. Let's just name it right, Ball. So the process is right click on this layer and go add, transform mask. The tweens will go on the transform mask. The only thing that the ball can tween itself is opacity. We want to be able to tween the position so the transform mask will allow that to happen. We still can't do it without activating a docker. So we go settings, dockers, animation curves. Click on that. Here we go. Right now it's rude floating above the timeline. Let's see if we can dock the docker to here. So now we have our animation timeline and our animation curves. Drag the curves to here, make it a bit bigger. And we need to make some keyframes. So I'm just going to start fairly simply on this, go from frames one through 10. And let's just click on these little three lines here and make this clip end at 10. And we'll start the clip at one, which is good hygiene as well. So, and we make a keyframe. That is this icon here, add keyframes to control scalar property. Sounds like brain science. Click on that. And now we go to frame, I think 10, and we can see the frame number here. Go to 10. And I think we can click on the transform tool here and just drag. And you'll see these little red lines have opened here. Let's not worry about them for now and just shuttle through. And we have done our first motion tween in Krita. So to uh, see the full range of these lines here, uh, let's click on this icon here. It looks like a little S, zoom the view to fit curve. And you can see the, the red line is the position. If you look at the uh, batch of positions here to the left, it gives us different controls. And we can switch these on and off by um, clicking off the eye. So I think then that will actually keep the red position, but we don't see the line, but it keeps the animation. Anyway, we have the ability to move them on the X, Y, Z axes. Click here again if we want to move them down. And if you want to add Bezier curves, you click on one of the little dots. And I think it is here, Bezier curve interpolation. So you have various Bezier options and you can click on it now. And I think we can just add, well, I'm not going to worry about it too much in this case because we only have two keys. So it's limiting what I can do. But as you add more of these keys, you can have different Bezier curves. There is a much a more concise YouTube video. I'm going to link in the notes below. Uh, animator who did a bouncing ball, which came out really nice. He goes through it really fast. So if you've watched what I've done here, it'll be a good follow on because you'll see how quickly he's able to put this thing together. Now we only need to use this system to create a playhead for the wave. That's all we're going to use it for. So I'm going to close this window. And what we're going to create is something like this. So we have our waveform at the bottom of the screen. And let me see if I can zoom out to the timeline. And you see the black line here. That's the little playhead that I made. And that slides across. It's simply using the very same system that uh, we created in the other one. So we need a visual representation of the waveform. And it needs to match. This is very important. 
uh, the, the number of frames on the timeline. So what we need to do is figure out exactly how many frames at our current animation frame rate, 24 FPS, does this waveform represent? And so we first of all, we go into uh, Audacity, which is free. I mentioned this in my last movie. So you can download Audacity and it can do pretty much anything that you're going to need. The waveform that we have in here is stereo. We don't need stereo. I only need one waveform. I don't need two on top of each other. So let's click on the arrow here, split stereo track, click on the X to close that one. We can, apologies for the cat, we can expand the uh, waveform. And now I just need a screen grab of this. And I think we can actually export, I think there is a tool here that will export the image. But what I'm going to do is just do print screen. So I click on print screen. We go back into credit. Now I'm going to delete this or hide the uh, hide this layer here and recreate this whole thing. So I'm going to click on here, add a group layer. Click again and add, and I think probably just paste, but add a paint layer just in case. Control V. And then I'll just simply move this layer here. And a couple of different ways of doing this, but if I hit the uh, this wand selection tool here, I can select that gray area and I think delete that. And just hit the, the marquee, the uh, bounding box here. This does not have to be 100%, but just close enough. This should be, I think, fairly accurate. And we don't even need the, the bottom half of the wave because it's, just, it's the same up as below. So really all I need is this, Control C. And I think I can probably delete that layer now and make a new layer, Control V. Zooming out, I'm gonna put the, the white background back on so we can see it more easily. And then just drag this down and then use the transform tool again, just to drag it and make sure it snaps to the edge of the screen. And now we have our waveform. So this is a visual representation of where the ball will bounce. If you need to actually have a visual representation of the event, and now we need to animate the waveform. So I'm gonna delete the original thing that I had there, be confident, because I'm gonna redo it all. So we have the, the wave, so let's call that one wave. And there's nothing in that, a lot of junk got created there, so we're fine. So what we need to do now, two things. We need to make the playhead, it's going to slide across the screen. But very important, we have to figure out exactly how many frames this is going to be. So we go back into Audacity. And you know you can be at various points in the playhead and you can see down here to the fraction of a second, where are we in this? So here we're at zero, here we're at about one second. If you look at the number down in, in the selection area. And so we're somewhere around two seconds and a bit, but we really need to nail this or it's not gonna work. So we go, I think it's, where are we? Oh yeah, this button here. So this one goes skip to the end this frame is two minutes 0.743 seconds long. So there are various uh, websites that'll do this. Here's one I found, uh, toolstud.io. Uh, so we input the frames per second, 24 FPS. The duration is 2.743 seconds. Output FPS is 24 FPS, convert frame rate, and it's spitting out 65 frames. Maybe we don't trust this website. So I'm trying this different website, uh, some SQ. It's giving me a slightly different number. It's maybe 66. This one might be a little more accurate. So I'm going to go with the one with the slightly more precise one and make my timeline 66 frames just to be picky. So let's go to our little three dots in Krita. Clip ends on frame 66. And now you can see our exposure line is all the way through here. I'm not going to be to uh, pretty about this. Let's just go in and make a playhead, make it kind of big so we can see it. You don't want the playhead to be too small because uh, I'm gonna make this uh, shape here, make it its own layer. Call it playhead. And we'll make it sort of uh, chunky and make it black. Fill that black, deselect. And uh, we can move it to the start right there. So we want that to be on the first frame on the on the left, and we want to tween this across the 66 frames. So let's do that. Um, again, same process will be right click here, add, 
transform mask. And let's see here. We next need to add a keyframe on the animation curves window. So we need to add a keyframe here. Uh, one issue I had with this that was really off-putting was zooming out uh, the, the uh, timeline here. Let me see if I can figure that out again. Oh, here it was. <laughs> Guys, this is cryptic as hell. I am so used to seeing these little buttons and you click on them and you zoom out in chunks. To scrub out the timeline, you have to hold and drag these two little buttons here. And the other thing that might cause problems is if you drag with uh, a pen, watch if you can watch what's happening. I'm my, If your pen slides up or down, you're zooming in and zooming out. And it's a problem that a lot of us have had with this program with pens. It seems to be a mouse oriented design. I really wish they would fix this. So just be warned. I, I noticed as I, as I was zooming the first time I did this, I was wondering why are the frames getting so huge? And uh, again, it's just, you, you can click this icon and I'm dragging down and I'm zooming out, 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 click it again and drag out and drag in. And it's so easy to accidentally move, to have the same thing happen while moving the slider. That needs to be stopped the next time they update this program. <laughs> anyway, let's go to frame 66. And we can probably zoom in a bit here, just a bit. And now we want to click on the playhead and drag it. Okay, now it's fine. So now if I play, that's our playhead. And uh, let's see here. So I can collapse that file here. I'll call this one my um, audio and I'll just make all these layers red. So they sort of stand out when we have other character layers on top or behind. And now that we have it in the folder too, we can just hit the transform tool and we can, I think we can drag that, uh, hopefully we can, layer has children with transform mask, disable them for doing, okay. So I think if I can drag it with this tool here, you can pull it down to the bottom if you want get it a bit more out of the way. And now let's bring in, we can go back to the animation timeline, hit play, and we have our audio file here. We can switch it on or off to hide it. And let's bring in audio. So we go to the speaker, import audio, and just bring in any of these and see if this works. Not bad. If you absolutely have to have it, this is a way of doing it. I'm going to leave my default um, file in the notes below so you don't have to go through this process, but it's good that you know how it was done so it's not a mysterious object. All you would have to do to customize it will be to go into the uh, folder, um, import your own waveform as a screen cap from Audacity or whatever recalculate the timeline. And then if you want to reposition these keys, you go back into the animation curves and let's see if we can find them. It's the playhead layer. And if we can find the darned thing, it's playhead, audio playhead. Oh, transform mask. So the, uh, the keys are on the transform mask. We can, uh, if you have like a different um, runtime, you can click that and drag it. So now that the uh, animation will, will stop at a different point. Yeah, I think we need to make sure that we are on the right animation curves. I think you can also work in here as well. I think if we double click, it'll select all of those keyframes and then you can drag them to whatever new point you want. So let's say we want to maybe match this to uh, something that's half the speed. Very glitchy. So let's see if I'll just undo all of that and then go back to animation curves, double click these, dra drag them, whoop, drag them to number 30, which is where I want the animation to stop, say a shorter point or longer point. Go back to the first frame. You can see the, the keyframe is here now. Don't see it moving. Oh, come on. <sighs> 
Okay, so I'm going to leave that crash in. Uh, I, I had this crash happen more than once when using this motion tween tool. So it certainly isn't uh, solid. So I will leave you with a word of warning about it that it's not, it's not perfect by a long shot. So I would suggest when you're setting it up, set it up separately from your animation file and make sure you're backed up so that if you do start doing this, uh, your image, your animation scene is already preserved. Uh, so if you do have a crash, it doesn't take some of your work with it. Anyway, I'm going to go back to my original setup that I created before the, doing the one live. Here we have the animation curves. It's easier to see because it's uh, it's 10 frames. So again, we need to go into the uh, audio. I made this audio layer, uh, play it, and transform. The, the layer that you want to adjust is the transform layer. So if we want to expand this, say, from... 10 frames, which you certainly will to say 20. Let's just do something simple like that. We'll, it's ending on number 12 now. Let's make it uh, number 24. So we want to move these keys to here. So instead of just animating here and, and stopping or disappearing, it keeps going. So the uh, we could actually probably grab the artwork. Let's see if we can do that first. So let's go to, if it'll let me see it. Where are you, audio layer? I'm not seeing it. There it is. And then here, ah, there it is right at the end, okay? So what if we just want to take its position on the timeline and shunt it forward 12 frames? You sometimes might be able to click this and drag. Let's see if we crash again, or even if it works. I think that worked. That is by far the easiest way of doing it. So that's when I had the issue the uh, before in my previous test that just crashed at this point. It just glitched out, did something weird. So this time I open the clean and now when we play through, it's one second. So you can adjust your playhead to to the right frame account. So if you change the audio file, you want one that's longer or shorter, you go, you're gonna have to change this keyframe here. If you bring in an audio file that's two seconds long, you're gonna want to end it at number 48. Um, you can also go into the animation curves and noodle these around as well. Uh, that's another way of doing it. So, and again, if you, Hit the S curve here, you'll get to see the entire uh, batch. And again, click and hold down these to expand or contract the timeline. That's it. I don't strongly recommend this, but uh, it's handy to know how it's done. And it's also handy to know how to do motion tweens for motion graphic stuff if you want to do that. And I'm going to link to the uh, other YouTuber below who I forget his name, but uh, it'll be in the link. Uh, and his very quick tutorial on how to use the motion tween as well. Um, that's about it. Um, in the next movie, I'm going to talk a bit about brushes uh, because I've been playing around and I found a really nice brush that I love. And I've been having a lot of fun actually drawing in Krita to where I'm starting to prefer it over Photoshop. So let's go on to the next movie where we talk about the brush and I'm going to have those files uh, in the notes below.